killer? Uh-huh. Killed a couple of gooks in a bomb cracker one time. <laughs> The Vietnam War was a long, costly, and divisive conflict. That required soldiers to be brave and bold. Jerry, Mad Dog Shriver, was one of those men. Join us as we look at the most terrifying man of the Vietnam War. Vietnam War. The Vietnam War was fought in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia between November 1, 1955 and April 30, 1975 when Saigon fell. It was the second Indochina War and a crucial war in the Cold War. While the war was officially fought between North and South Vietnam, the North was supported by the Soviet Union, China, and other communist states, while the South was supported by the United States and other anti-communist allies, turning the conflict into a proxy war between the two. It lasted nearly two decades, with direct U.S. military involvement ending in 1973. The struggle also spread to neighboring nations intensifying the Laotian and Cambodian civil wars, which finished with all three countries formally becoming communist governments in 1976. The conflict had a massive human cost. Estimates of the number of Vietnamese military and civilians dead varied from 966,000 to 3 million. The fight claimed the lives of 275,000 to 310,000 Cambodians, 20,000 to 62,000 Laotians, and 58,220 American service members. The end of the Vietnam War triggered the Vietnamese boat people and the Greater Indochina Refugee Crisis, in which millions of refugees fled Indochina, an estimated 250,000 of whom died at sea. Once in power, the Khmer Rouge committed the Cambodian genocide, and the war between them and unified Vietnam eventually evolved into the Cambodian-Vietnamese War, which overthrew the Khmer Rouge government in 1979 and put an end to the genocide. In retaliation, China invaded Vietnam, resulting in border warfare that lasted until 1991. In the United States, the war sparked what became known as Vietnam Syndrome, a public aversion to American overseas military participation, which, along with the Watergate incident, contributed to the crisis of trust that plagued America during the 1970s. The United States Air Force destroyed more than 20% of South Vietnam's jungles and 20 to 50% of its mangrove forests by spraying approximately 20 million U.S. gallons of poisonous herbicides, including including Agent Orange. The battle is one of the most widely used examples of ecocide. 9. Pin Down Hatchet During the Vietnam War, a hatchet force or hatchet unit was a special operations unit made up of American and South Vietnamese MACV, SOG troops who carried out small clandestine operations along the Ho Chi Minh Trail beginning in 1966. The forces specialized in seek and destroy missions, as well as the recovery of missing American service members in Laos, Cambodia, and North Vietnam. Hatchet force teams would operate in small groups of three American Special Forces soldiers and 20 to 40 local soldiers probing the border areas for a conflict. Hatchet force teams remained active until each field command was disbanded. They operated from Firebase 3 during the siege of Khe Sanh, a U.S. Marine Corps airstrip. While the hatchet team was made up of six American special forces and 32 indigenous soldiers, the firebase housed 131 Americans and 457 special commando units of indigenous soldiers. The hatchet teams served as striking forces, operating in the jungle against targets identified by recon teams operating from Khe Sanh. On December 30, 1968, a hatchet force of 40 soldiers led by First Lieutenant James R. Gerson was sent one mile east of the Laos-Cambodian border to look for Sergeant Robert Francis Sheridan, who had gone missing. The hatchet force detonated a claymore and was ambushed by two company-sized North Vietnamese troops. Three and a half hours later, the hatchet force successfully blasted a landing zone from which they were removed, with 50% fatalities, including Gerson. Gerson's second-in-command, Robert L. Howard, was later awarded the Medal of Honor. A second squad of Montagnards was brought in in January 1969 and spent four days looking for Sheridan before being killed in a helicopter crash shortly after extraction. Sheridan is still reported as missing in action. On June 23, 1971, a hatchet force was deployed 60 miles west-southwest of Da Nang, 
five miles from the Lao-Cambodia border. They were entrusted with locating Madison Alexander Strohline, a sergeant assigned to a four-man Halo squad the day before. The hatchet crew found a CAR-15 weapon and a parachute at the base of a tree. Strohline, however, was absent, and no blood or bandages were found. Strohline is still listed as missing in action. Between September 11th and September 13th, 1970, a hatchet force led a secret incursion into southern Laos to create a diversion for the Royal Lao Army's onslaught against the People's Army of Vietnam. The mission led by Captain Eugene McCarley, comprised of 16 Americans and 110 Montagnard tribesmen who landed 60 miles west of their launch site at Dakto. Despite continual enemy contact, equipment caches and enemy unit dispositions were discovered and bombed from the air, and two intelligence footlockers were recovered. The hatchet force was subsequently split into three teams and evacuated, with at least 54 People's Army men killed. 8. Dashes from cover to cover America had never fought a war like Vietnam. It was a complex struggle that lasted more than 40 years. America was active in the final nine years of the conflict, which ended with the humiliating mass withdrawal of American forces from the country in 1973. Over the duration of the battle, American troops' casualties were believed to be around 58,000 dead and over 300,000 injured, with nearly 10,000 planes and helicopters lost. It was, at times, an extremely unusual conflict, with few planned battles and occasional but intense aircraft operations. Despite the emergence of high-tech weapons such as SAMs, dedicated gunships, and the widespread use of guided missiles, the fight remained down and dirty. The demand for special forces had never been stronger. Many great and brave men served in Vietnam, and among these valiant soldiers was Jerry Mad Dog Shriver of the U.S. 5th Special Forces. He was born on September 24, 1941, in Florida's little tourist town of Defuniac Springs. Little is known about Shriver's life, and his biography begins when he entered the army at a young age. He arrived in Vietnam in 1966, having achieved the rank of Sergeant First Class. He eventually led a platoon of the 5th Special Forces, an unorthodox task group tasked with carrying out top-secret missions across the Southeast Asian theater during the Vietnam War. The team's primary responsibility was to conduct deep infiltration missions beyond enemy lines, followed by hazardous strategic reconnaissance and interdiction duties. Much of Shriver's work with MACV, SOG, may never be known because the missions were highly classified and frequently took place in countries where they were not permitted. However, the honors he received were a testament of his bravery, dedication to duty, and successes. Throughout his short life, he was awarded two silver stars, three Army Commendation Medals for Valor, seven Bronze Stars, one Purple Heart, one Air Medal, and the Soldier's Medal. His reputation was such that Hanoi Hanna gave him the nickname Mad Dog, and the North Vietnamese government appeared to be so terrified of him that they offered a $10,000 bounty on his life. It was claimed that by his third tour of duty, Shriver had become unstable and antisocial. He had even begun to drink heavily and was reported to have difficulty sleeping. It was even alleged that he slept with his M3A1 suppressed submachine gun under his pillow. 7. About Jerry M. Shriver If you read a lot of novels about Vietnam or see movies about it, you'll probably come across a character who has become a caricature of the subgenre. Prior to Vietnam, this caricature has rarely, if ever, appeared in film or fiction. The character is eccentric on good days and insane the rest of the time. He is almost impervious to rules, etiquette, rank, and military customs. He wouldn't last a day in a professional military force unless he was an effective killing machine in the bush. When he's on the battlefield, he's almost like a superhero. He has the hearing and scent of a dog, the vision of an eagle, and the longevity of a cat. His instincts go well beyond Sergeant Rock's combat antenna. He is brave in a fight, most likely because no one is scarier than him. He rarely appears in garrison, but when he does, he is a peacetime rear echelon sergeant major's nightmare. In short, he is more of a warrior than a soldier, and he's probably as insane as the Vietnam War was. At least that's how he appears to the typical civilian. This stereotype had an archetype, but you may call it a pro Prototype. This recurring character bears strong resemblance to real-life special operators on SOG teams and reconnaissance projects in Vietnam. The most famous and iconic of these operators was Jerry Mad Dog Shriver. According to Paul Longrier, who served alongside Shriver and wore his Montagnard bracelet for years after Vietnam, meeting Shriver did not necessarily imply knowing him. He was simply that crazy. In our thumbnail, Jerry Shriver is the man in the highlighted red circle. He seems like he's having a good time staring into the camera, but the Vietnam War was hard and ugly, and these soldiers always expected the worst. 6. Jim Fleming James Philip Fleming is a former U.S. Air Force pilot who fought in the Vietnam War. Born in Sedalia, Missouri, he received the Medal of Honor for rescuing a six-man MACV, SOG reconnaissance unit, stuck between well-guarded enemy positions in Duc Co, Vietnam, in 1968. 
1968, Fleming was the aircraft commander of a UH-1F transport helicopter deployed to the 20th Special Operations Squadron at Ban Mai Thuot East Airfield in the Republic of Vietnam. On November 26, a six-man Army Special Forces Green Beret Reconnaissance Unit was airlifted into Vietnam's Western Highlands, near the Cambodian border and around 30 miles west of Pleiku. Hours later, they were pinned next to a river, with enemy forces on three sides. An Air Force forward air controller got the team leader's demand for emergency evacuation, and all five Five helicopters in the region, despite being low on fuel, flew to the coordinates while the controller briefed them on the situation. The Green Berets came under fire from six heavy machine guns and an unspecified number of hostile soldiers. When the helicopter spotted the team's smoke, the gunships opened fire, taking out two machine gun positions. One gunship was hit and crashed over the river, and its crew was picked up by another transport. A second truck, running low on fuel, had to withdraw out of formation and return to the base. There were only two helicopters left. Fleming's and one that was nearly out of ammunition. Fleming, hovering just above the forest treetops, investigated the only clearing near enough for the men to access and discovered that landing there was difficult. Instead, he flew across the river, hovering just over the water with his landing skids against the bank, hoping the Special Forces troops could safely run the few yards necessary to get to his chopper. In addition to exposing his aircraft to ground fire, this maneuver needed exceptional piloting ability. After a few minutes, the reconnaissance crew radioed that they couldn't make it to the chopper. Fleming lifted his UH-1 out of range of enemy fire. The air controller ordered the Green Berets to detonate their explosives as Fleming made one final attempt to save them. As the mines exploded, he lowered his chopper and balanced it against the riverbank, providing the Green Berets with an open cargo door through which to leap to safety. The hostile soldiers concentrated their firepower on the UH-1. The Green Berets dashed for the helicopter, firing as they went and killing three Viet Cong within 10 feet from the aircraft. As they leaped through the cargo door, Fleming again reversed the helicopter away from the bank and flew down the river to safety. Fleming successfully took off despite a barrage of hostile fire and landed safely at a forward base. Captain Fleming's sincere concern for his fellow soldiers and willingness to go above and beyond the call of duty are consistent with the best traditions of the United States Air Force and reflect well on him and his country's armed forces. 4. Weapons The North Vietnamese Army, Viet Cong, Army of the Republic of Vietnam, United States Armed Forces, Republic of Korea Armed Forces, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Royal Thai Armed Forces, Australian Defense Force, and New Zealand Defense Force all fought in the Vietnam War, along with a variety of irregular troops. Almost all U.S. Allied forces were equipped with U.S. weaponry, like the M1 Garand, M1 Carbine, M14 Rifle, and M16 Rifle. The 7.62mm L1A1 self-loading rifle was the service rifle for Australian and New Zealand military, with the M16 rifle being used on occasion. Although the PAVN inherited various American, French, and Japanese weapons from World War II and the First Indochina War, the People's Republic of China, the Soviet Union, and its Warsaw Pact allies primarily equipped and supplied them. Furthermore, North Vietnam created several weapons, including anti-personnel explosives, the K-50M, and homemade copies of the RPG-2. By 1969, the U.S. Army had classified 40 rifle types, 22 machine gun types, 17 mortar types, 20 recoilless rifle or rocket launcher types, 9 anti-tank weapons, and 14 anti-aircraft artillery weapons for deployment by ground soldiers on all sides. Anti-communist forces also used 24 varieties of armored vehicles and self-propelled artillery, as well as 26 types of field artillery and rocket launchers. The Vietnam War was the first battle to see widespread tactical deployment of helicopters. The Bell UH-1 Iroquois, nicknamed Huey, was widely deployed in counter-guerrilla operations as both a troop carrier and gunship. In the latter function, it was armed with a variety of weapons, including M60 machine guns, multi-barreled 7.62mm miniguns, and unguided air-to-surface rockets. The Hueys were also effectively utilized for medevac and search and rescue missions. The AC-130 Spectre gunship and the UH-1 Huey gunship were two aircraft that played important roles during the war. The AC-130 was a heavily armed ground attack aircraft based on the C-130 Hercules transport plane. It was used for close air support, air interdiction, and force protection. The AC-130H Spectre was equipped with two 20mm M61 Vulcan cannons, a Bofors 40mm autocannon, and a 105mm M102 howitzer. The Huey was a military helicopter with a single turboshaft engine, and about 7,000 UH-1 aircraft saw action in Vietnam. Ground forces had access to B-52s, F-4 Phantom IIs, and other aircraft capable of launching napalm, 
white phosphorus, tear gas, and chemical weapons. During the war, aircraft ordnance included precision-guided munition, cluster bombs, and a thickening gelling agent mixed with petroleum or a similar fuel for use in an incendiary device, initially against buildings, and later primarily as an anti-personnel weapon that stuck to skin and could burn down to bone. The Claymore M18A1, an anti-personnel mine, was widely used and was command detonated and directional, shooting 700 steel pellets in the kill zone. Guerrilla warfare and the use of chemical weapons resulted in widespread and severe deaths on both sides during this long war. This revelation was extensively televised, inciting anti-war protests and lowering the morale of Americans fighting in Vietnam. 5. MACV SOG Jerry Mad Dog Shriver conducted scores of covert trips into Laos and Cambodia before his luck ran out. He was without a doubt the most accomplished and well-known recon man in the SOG. In the late 1960s, no special forces warrior at Fort Bragg even breathed the top secret initials, SOG. But everyone knew about the renowned studies and observations group Green Beret recon team leader, Sergeant First Class Jerry Shriver, called a mad dog by Radio Hanoi. Jerry Shriver had delivered the most famous response in SOG history, radioing his superiors to tell them not to worry because North Vietnamese forces had encircled his little team. No, no, he said. I've got him right where I want him, surrounded from the inside. Mad Dog was a walking arsenal, complete with sawed-off shotguns or silenced submachine guns, handguns, knives, and grenades. He resembled Rambo, according to First Sergeant Billy Greenwood. Shriver's face was blonde, tall, and slim, with chiseled features and piercing blue eyes. His eyes lacked soul and expression. M-A-C-V. S-O-G is the acronym for Military Assistance Command, Vietnam Studies and Observations Group. It was a highly classified, multi-service United States Special Operations Organization that carried out covert, unconventional warfare activities before and throughout the Vietnam War. Established on January 24, 1964, it conducted strategic reconnaissance missions in the Republic of Vietnam, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. The squads took enemy prisoners, rescued downed pilots, conducted rescue operations to retrieve prisoners of war throughout Southeast Asia, and carried out clandestine agent team activities and psychological operations. The battalion took part in most of the major campaigns of the Vietnam Vietnam War, notably the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which sparked expanded American participation. On May 1, 1972, the unit was downsized and redesignated Strategic Technical Directorate Assistance Team 158 to facilitate the transfer of its activities to the Strategic Technical Directorate of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam as part of the Vietnamization process. 3. Closest Companion There was no one else like Mad Dog Shriver. Medal of Honor recipient Jim Fleming, who flew USAF Hueys for SOG, described him as the archetypal warrior loner, antisocial, and obsessed with what he was doing. Shriver rarely talked and spent days walking around camp in the same clothes. In his sleep, he cradled a loaded rifle, and at the club, he'd buy a case of beer, open each can, and go alone to a corner to drink them all. Although he had received a silver star, five bronze stars, and the soldier's medal, the 28-year-old Green Beret was unconcerned with honors. He cared about the Montagnard Hill tribesmen and spent all his money on them, even collecting food, clothing, and whatever else people offered to distribute in yard communities. He was the lone American to dwell in the Montagnard barracks. The Montagnards treated him almost reverently. Shriver's closest buddy was a German shepherd named Klaus, whom he had brought back from Taiwan. Klaus became ill after drinking beer one night, and some recon men fed him before he pooped on the NCO club floor. They rubbed his nose in it before throwing him out. Shriver arrived, had a beer, took off his blue velvet smoking jacket and derby hat, placed a .38 pistol on a table, then dropped his pants and defecated on the floor, daring anyone to wipe his nose on the floor. Everyone pretended not to hear him, but one man who'd fed Klaus beer begged the recon company commander to intercede. The captain laughed in his face. 2. Lost. Never seen again. On April 24, 1969, a platoon-sized squad of U.S. and South Vietnamese forces infiltrated by helicopter into Kampong Cham Province, Cambodia, for a combat mission. As they progressed from their landing zone to the initial rally point, they were met with intense fire from a numerically superior enemy force. A long gunfight ensued. Repeated airstrikes were launched on the enemy positions, but the remaining men of the unit had to be evacuated from the landing zone. Continuous enemy fire hampered the retrieval of deceased and missing team members. When the crew was attacked, Shriver was seen retreating away from the other guys toward a tree line on the outskirts of the landing zone. Another team member contacted him by radio, but the connection was broken within a few minutes, and Shriver was never seen again. The team was obliged to depart from the region without him, and later, searches failed to find him. He is still unaccounted for. The United States Army upgraded Sergeant First Class Shriver to the rank of Master Sergeant following the incident, while he was still 
considered missing in action. Today, Master Sergeant Shriver is remembered on the courts of the missing at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. His name, along with that of all his dead friends, is inscribed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. 1. Award The President of the United States of America awarded the Silver Star to Staff Sergeant Jerry Michael Shriver for exceptional bravery and intrepidity in battle while serving in the Republic of Vietnam. Shriver distinguished himself on October 27, 1966, while acting as an assistant team leader for a four-man Special Forces Reconnaissance Squad on a combat operation deep in hostile territory. While going through the forest, his team was ambushed by a numerically superior Viet Cong group. Sergeant Shriver and his troops were successful in repelling the initial attack and promptly retreated into a defensive perimeter. He then stepped outside the cordon to approach the body of a deceased rebel to gather intelligence. He moved back, passing within 10 meters of two rebels after the Viet Cong had removed all the equipment off the body. He attempted to communicate with friendly forces by radio but was unable to do so due to thick terrain. The opposing forces quickly surrounded his crew, but he fired heavily on them and repelled their numerous probes. Finally making contact, he ordered airstrikes on Viet Cong strongholds to support evacuation efforts. Because of the terrain and heavy shooting, the helicopters could only lift one person at a time. Sergeant Shriver volunteered to stay on the ground to cover the operations and directed lethal fire on hostile soldiers' concentrated strikes. Ignoring the spray of bullets flying about him, he battled fiercely until all his men were aboard and safe. One must be brave to fight in wars such as the Vietnam War, but Mad Dog Shriver was beyond brave. What did you think of him? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.